Jesus mighty name we have worshipped please kindly have your seats Isaiah chapter 9 Isaiah chapter 9 verses 6 and 7 thank you thank you choir thank you musician thank you thank you praise God Isaiah chapter 9 verses 6 and 7 the Bible says for unto us a child is born unto us a son is given and the government will be upon his shoulder and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Verse 7 says, of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Hallelujah. I'm going to stop the reading at that particular point. There shall be no end. Um, I just want to quickly talk to us about the gift of Christmas. You know, I look on my streets and I see so many decorations. People are decorating their houses without Jesus, the reason for the season. Praise the Lord. We have so much beautiful decorations all around. They are very good. They make, they make everywhere look very beautiful and all that. But there is, much, there is so much more about Jesus. There is so much more about Jesus Christ. And this Jesus Christ, he has come, um, John chapter 10, verse 10. The Bible says that the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. It says, but hi, I am come. He didn't say I have come. He said, I am come. So that you can have life and have it in abundance. And that's why he was saying the same thing in John 14, chapter 6. He says, I am the truth, the way, and what? And the life. So that is what is the gift of Christmas. Jesus came to give life. He came to give life. Now, in the life that he came to give, there is so much more in this life that people don't even know. So for me, Christianity is not a brand. No, 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 it's not a brand. It's a way of life. And in case you're asking for my religion, I don't even have one. I just follow Jesus. I believe in Jesus and I follow Jesus. So that's why when people ask me, what is your religion? I, religion, I say, I don't understand what you mean. Hallelujah. Because I follow the giver of life. Praise the Lord. So I just want to quickly talk to you this evening. If you're following Jesus as a brand, if you are following Jesus by association, if you are following Jesus in whichever way you are following Jesus. You know, some people, you know, just from where we came from, now we are the test. This is a, a good place to test it. If you are truly a Christian from where somebody like me came from or not, praise the Lord. Some people could stay in church for 40 days because they want to get something. You know, the moment they get that thing, Jesus is gone. Because they had no business with him in the first place. And so that's why we can see that some people arrived here. Because for some people, this is like, um, this is like, you know, I don't know, some kind of green pasture and all of that. So Jesus was never the focus in the first place. So the moment they got to a place of their vision, then they neglect Jesus. But there is something, there is so much more about Jesus. There is so much more. It is true that where some of us came from, we've had some kind of messages that, that tweaked our understanding a little bit. Just like the, uh, the people in John chapter 6. Jesus fed them. And after he fed them, he crossed over to the other side. And they took their boat again. They were looking for him. Why were they looking for him? Because of the food. They had no interest in whatever he was saying. Praise the Lord. They had no interest in whatever he was saying. I hear a lot of Christians complain. Oh, I don't like that pastor. That pastor's church is not the only church that exists. Look for another church and fellowship with Jesus. Because he is the giver of life. Some people say, oh, somebody did not look at me very well in that church. Because you did not even understand why you came to church in the first place. That's why you are seeing somebody looking at you. Praise the Lord. Jesus is the giver of life. Hallelujah. Some people left churches because they felt that, of course, if there's any church that does not minister to the needs of its, its member, that's not a very good thing. 
Of course, I don't support such things. But however, some people have left churches because they felt that, oh, they don't support me in that place. No, you are supposed to meet the God of the church. If you have met with the God of the church, you can never be expelled from church. You can't be expelled from church. So this Jesus that we are talking about, some of us have made men. We look more unto men. But the Bible says that he is, his name is wonderful. Jesus' name is wonderful. So if you need wonderful things in your life, where do you go? Come on now, where do you go? So some of us still make mistakes. We believe that if we don't get to a particular program, some things cannot happen in our lives. It's because you have not met Jesus. You haven't. You have not met Jesus. The Bible says he is the counselor. Jesus is the counselor. Because of time, I'm just running through this. He is the mighty God. I hear some Christians still confused. Jesus is God. If you like it, take it. If you don't like it, don't take it. We had the sermon in the morning. Emmanuel, God with us. And the minister even went into John chapter 1. In the beginning was the word. The word was God and the word was God. Was wood, which wood? With God. And God was the word. The word was God. Praise the Lord. There is no separation. Jesus is God. Let me announce to somebody beside you. Say Jesus is God. In verse 14, the Bible says, he became flesh. Why? He just wanted to experience us in creation. That's why he came. That's why Hebrews chapter 4, I think verse 15, the Bible says that we do not have an high priest that cannot be touched with the feelings of our effect. Who was tempted at all points, yet without sin. Yet without sin. So, if you are condemning sinners, tell your neighbor, say, stop condemning sinners. Because Jesus did not condemn you. He came to give life. He came to give life. You can help a sinner out of their sin. You are in no place to condemn anyone. Do you remember the book of John chapter 8? The woman that was caught in the act of adultery. When that woman came to him, what did he say? He says, which of you, if you have not done anything, cast the first stone. What happened? Everybody left. What did he say at the end? He said, I myself, I do not what? I do not. Because he brought life. He brought life. And in that life, there is everything in that life. He is the mighty God. He is the everlasting father. Matthew chapter 6. Jesus was speaking. He says, which of you will in son ask for bread and you give stone? He says, how much more your heavenly father? But do you know that if you have not, if you, if you refuse to get to that point of seeing God as your direct father, you cannot experience that. You cannot experience that aspect of him. That's what the minister was telling us in the morning. He was saying something that if God will pour out mercy, it is those that are near him that will receive it first. It's like that. He gave us an example of if you walk in the head office, those are the people that get promoted first. Because they are the ones that are being seen. Tell somebody, say, let God see you. Let God see you. Come on, say it very well now. Let God see you. Say, let the world know that you are a Christian. That one seems a bit low. <laughs> Say it again, please. Jesus did not hide you. Don't hide Jesus. Uh -huh. Thank you for helping me to preach. Praise the Lord. Jesus did not hide you. Stop hiding him. Of course, the reason some people don't want people to know that they are Christian is because they still want to live a life of sin. That's why. That's why. But Jesus is not condemning you. He wants you for a relationship. He wants to give you life. He wants to give you life. And he wants to give you that life in full. I'm going to end here. It says, Jesus is the prince of peace. 
is the Prince of Peace. The people that are very close to me, and I'm not saying this because I'm a pastor. Mm -mm, no, 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 no. I have peace. <laughs> I can't explain it myself. I have peace. I have peace. It is what Jesus can give. If you would allow Jesus to take care of you, you will forget about any other man. You will forget about any other man. You know, because we trust so much in men, once we look up to somebody and the person dashed our hope, then we just give up. It's because you have not truly met with Jesus. You have not. Lazarus was dead for how many days? For how many days now? Four days. He brought him back to life. There is nothing that he cannot do. Everything you need is in the life that he brought. Everything you need is in that life that Jesus brought. The only thing that you need to do is to get closer to him. Don't let your situation define your relationship with God. Don't let what you are going through define your relationship with God. Don't let money. Some people will come to God. They are looking for money. Once they get the money, that's the end. Then they just go away. They wait for another problem to come and then they come back. Don't be like that. Don't be like that. Jesus can solve your problem permanently. He can solve your problem permanently. Praise the Lord. He is the he is called wonderful. He is the counselor. He is the mighty God. He is the everlasting father. He is the prince of peace. These are the gifts of Christmas. And tied to that is his life that he brought. It is in that life that you can experience all of this. I've shared with some of us before that probably have heard it from me. There was a friend of mine that came to Jesus because he was having issues with physics. That was what brought him to Jesus. And he became fire for God. He became fire for God. Something may bring you to Christ. Don't let that thing become your focus. Because whatever brought you to Christ, if that becomes your focus, you will lose Christ. Christ. You will lose Christ. And that is the challenge sometimes. God has wrought a miracle in your life. Don't focus on that miracle. Focus on the one who brought that miracle. Because he has so much more. Someone described, you know, Jesus like a candy man. He has a lot in his hands. He has a lot in his hands. So if you took one from him and you went away, then you are losing so much more. Don't go away from Jesus. Don't go away from Jesus. He himself is life. And I pray that you will have that life. You will have it abundantly. In the mighty name of Jesus. All eyes closed. All heads bow. I don't know whatever you're going through here this evening. But I've just told us. Everything that you need is in Christ. And they are all tied around these five names given to Jesus here. Wonderful. Counselor. Mighty God. Social media cannot be your counselor. A lot of things going on in that place right now. Everlasting Father. The Prince of Peace. Everything that you need is tied. They are tied in, this, in these titles of Jesus. <clears throat> all eyes closed all let's bow if you are here you've never surrendered to the lordship of Jesus Christ would you please come to Jesus today today that is the eve of the remembrance of the birth of Jesus if you have not at any time given your life to Christ could you please raise up your hand I'm just going to pray with you I'm not asking you to come out you have, you have not surrendered yourself to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Anyone raising his hand or hand in this place tonight? 
Or are you here? Is your relationship with Christ suffering? Or is your relationship with Christ in problem? And you are saying you want to rededicate that relationship with Jesus. Could you please also raise your hand? I just want to pray with you. Your relationship is suffering with Christ. Thank you for that. And all heads bow, all eyes closed. All heads bow, all eyes closed. If you know your relationship is suffering with Christ, please raise that hand. I just want to pray with you. Some of these things we cannot do by our own power. We need the help of God. Father Lord, I just want to thank you for these hands that I, ra that I raised to you. You are bowing your head. Just be praying for yourself. Just be praying for yourself. You are bowing your head. I want to pray, oh God, for these people that are raising their hands, oh God. Lord, I receive strength for these people in the mighty name of Jesus. Please bring them back into true fellowship with you in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever is stopping them from fellowshipping with, with you truly. Could it be friends? Could it be situations? Father Lord, I pray that you please deal with those situations in the name of Jesus. Whatever friend that will not make this ones to enjoy everything that you brought. Father, let them separate them from such friends in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God Almighty, let today be a good memorial for these people in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for our prayers. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's all open.